Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at, well, it's not a ready-to-buy sort of product, but it's the uh, Pavo Mini from Beta FPV. As you can see, this is a small, tiny DJI 03, but they do have a wax nail print available if you choose to run that system or you run that system. Uh, Cine Whoop, Cine Whoop, Cine Whoop, Film a Whoop, Movie Whoop whatever you want to call it. And uh, it, they're taking a little bit of an HD zero approach. They're requesting feedback. Um, they did have the option to, to buy the frame kit for a little while, uh, but that's no longer an option. So I thought what a better way of getting feedback than to make a video for all of those that come to this channel and enjoy micros like I do, because who knows better about the feedback of the customer base than people who fly micros, which I presume you are. First thing to note is unfortunately, I let the battery sit too long. These beta FPV batteries, they uh, the voltage comes down. So you'll notice that um, my plug-in voltage is just a touch over four volts per cell or just a touch over eight volts in total. Uh, this is 2S, it's running uh, 1102, 14,000 kV motors. And you can see that this is the DVR file from the goggles. I did figure out why it didn't sync with my flight audio very well. <laughs> It's just the way Adobe Premiere handles uh, MOV files. I have to pre-process the MOV files in order to get it to sync up uh, with my flight audio, which is in an MP4 format. Of course, the video recording that comes on the DJI 03 is uh, MP4 format, so those sync up just fine. But I thought this was probably most important to show you because it, uh, it is small, so its design intent is to be in small places, and one of those small places is a home. Uh, whether you're doing real estate fly-throughs or you just like to fly casually and you like to use or you do use the uh, DJI 03 uh, or video system. Uh, and also, this is pretty much the only flight I can show you with low to no winds because boy has it been blowing a gale around here. Uh, really lucky that I was able to get the Mobula 8 video done when I did because uh, those two days of relatively low winds that I had outside in that video Boy, it, 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 the wind came back like a vengeance, and it doesn't look like it's going to be turning around for the next at least four or five days, from what I can tell uh, from the weather data. So this will tell you in the top left uh, the throttle value that I'm using as I fly it around. Uh, it also gives you some additional information about voltage, uh, voltage sag. We can't really see the fly time. It's kind of behind the storage full because my onboard storage was, uh, of course, full as indicated. Uh, this is over the weekend. So it was, I believe, Saturday of this past weekend. Uh, kids at home, uh, you'll hear in the background noise our youngest who doesn't appear in the video, but she is upstairs and uh, just kind of making uh, kid noise. So uh, some house noises for you to uh, endure, I guess I should say. Um, and many people think my kids are so jaded. They don't oftentimes make too many appearances in videos, but uh, they don't get too fussed about this. I did have a crash inside and uh, we will highlight that as well because the O3 unit did come loose. It didn't come out, it just came out of its solid placement. I didn't really have any damage during that flight to speak of, although I did damage the battery tray, but I can't say if it was on that flight or if it's just on landing. Uh, the battery tray just cracked. That's mainly my biggest concern with this is overall durability, although generally speaking, I can't see that we can design a quad to be about 100 grams. They market it at 100 grams. I get almost 101 grams on my scale and still be very durable just because the plastic materials either have to be different um, and still have some ability to maintain that low weight or they're going to be more durable and they're going to be heavier. Um, but that's just kind of how we have to deal with when it comes to something like this, if it is a tool in your quad tool belt that you need. I do fly this a little bit long and I have adjusted the battery voltage a little bit. I think I go about five to 10 seconds too long on this particular flight, which does edge towards or gets to four minutes, uh, but the voltage does not recover all the way to uh, 3.5 volts per cell, which is kind of my standard bearer is that I like to disarm and see that voltage on the battery recover to 3.5 volts per cell. Uh, so that keeps our battery in pretty good health. 
Um, this one just doesn't recover nearly as much because I flew it a touch too long. But indoor, in a zero wind environment, I thought the video looked pretty smooth. So that's something that the eagle eyed will want to look at uh, to make sure that you're getting the video quality that you're expecting in a zero wind environment. And then outdoor, we will get a high wind environment. As you can see there, I finally landed and we've got uh, three point, almost 3.4 volts per cell. So not terrible low. I've gone lower. Okay, terrible windy outdoor flight, a data point to show you. <laughs> 16 mile an hour steady winds with gusts getting up into the mid 20s. Uh, weather data reported wind gusts of 28 miles an hour. Uh, you should be able to hear that on the flight audio. The DJ 03 air unit does not record that audio. I am recording that on a separate camera so that you can hear what the quad sounds like. And of course, in this case, you get a sound of, or you get to hear what the environment sounds like as well. Of course, not all the wind is directly hitting the quad. We have the fence, we have the trees, we have houses, we're in town. So they measure wind out kind of in the open area to get a true reading of the wind. Uh, we're not feeling all of that, but it is definitely blowing around. Even uh, unprop protected micros that I flew on this day, you could definitely feel it. Uh, I had two different micros that I was doing some tuning on. Uh, some trouble tuning on actually that I had uh, out on this same particular day and you know the wind impacted those as well so that's not to be surprised but I still wanted to show you this because it gives you an idea of the limitations when we go this small and this prop size at this weight with an HD system such as the DJI 03 air unit that 16 mile an hour winds or whatever mile an hour is actually hitting the quad does have an impact in getting truly stable video. I should say that in all the videos, uh, Rocksteady or EIS, Enhanced Image Stabilization, is turned off. Uh, so we don't see any of the uh, stabilization that you can get out of, of the DJI uh, 03. And also it has not been passed through any sort of stabilization software. So this is stuck uh, out of the camera, except for the, of course, DVR that I showed for the indoor flight. Uh, hopefully that was known, but in case you're not familiar with uh, the DJI system, those may be points of interest that you want to take uh, into consideration. Up front, I will tell you that we are much more exposed to the wind, especially the closer to the street we get. I've said that before, but the wind seems to typically, in the warmer months, just blow right down that street. Um, so the front of the house is going to have more of the direct or full miles an hour of the wind. Uh, but that's that's a, a pretty good sample of our outdoor flight. I don't think we need to see too much more. Uh, I do want to show you that indoor crash that I had, though. Okay, no flight audio in this. As we head downstairs, uh, I'm going to pass by our oldest who will be heading off to college soon. And of course he sticks out his hand because he's an 18 year old. <laughs> um, so stability test there, or I guess a skill test and making sure that I don't crash there. Uh, I do crash here in a moment though. Oddly enough, he reads a lot on his phone. We have bought him books over the years for stuff. And we just find that even if we buy him the book for say for his birthday or for Christmas, that he prefers to have it on his phone. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a font size issue or if it's just uh, the ease of being able to do that. And there you go. I see I bonked that cube gate and then I bonked against the wall and then down to the floor. And now we're sitting a little wonky, but we take off. Uh, you can't hear him, but he actually said, oh, it's fairly durable. <laughs> so the durability caught him a little bit off guard as well. But that, that was the one crash that I had that wasn't really a bump. It actually fell down and kind of tumbled a little bit. Uh, so I thought I would share that with you. And yes, I do have a sunburn. I was at a tennis tournament uh, just yesterday, and the sun was kind of coming at me this way. So kind of this part of my face, it's fairly red, but not too painful. So as I mentioned, uh, on my scale, I got nearly 101 grams all at flying weight with the battery. Typically, we save dry weight when we don't include the battery. So if you weigh that without the battery, you get substantially less. Uh, a couple of my own critiques, and I've already submitted this in beta FPV's form, but I wanted to give you a close desk look at this little quad. This print that they have, they do have this available so you can print this yourself, which I think is a good thing uh, because if you do buy one and it breaks for some reason, uh, to be able to print your own is a nice quick repair or if you want to print extras in case you're out and about flying and then you break one. Uh, I only had the one crash that I can speak of. And when I did have that crash, what happened was, as you can see in this image, that the, the O3 air unit just kind of shifted out of its holder. And I think that we can actually improve that. But again, it's a weight balance between improving how well it holds this versus having the, the low weight if having 
the, the low weight helps its flyability, but it might also not help its durability. And that may be important to some of you. And the print that they sent with this uh, seems to be kind of one of those nylon carbon prints. It's actually pretty rigid uh, with some flexibility though. Uh, I think I may have run the wire between the camera and the O3 Air unit wrong. I put it between. Didn't seem to cause any problems. Seemed like a likely spot with it coming out of the camera lower. But this hump seems to indicate that maybe that's where they intended for the camera cable to come out of but I did not put it there of course with it being mounted so proud up here we've got easy accessibility to not only the plug the antenna and the SD card and the USB-C port everything's right there for our access I did not put the antennas into their little antenna holders I was not comfortable with that it to me it felt like it was putting too much strain on the UFL connector not the connector to the board but the wire uh, portion or wire side of the connector uh, so I ended up pulling those out my concern was by the time you got these routed in here, that there was so little slack space that if you hit the back end of the antennas, that it could pull the antenna after out of the UFL connection port of the wire. So I didn't want to do that. So I left it loose so that if it did hit, that it would just kind of flop about. It wouldn't have that extra tension. So in my opinion, this needs to be modified in order to still hold the antennas where we want to hold them, if we want to hold them at all, and have a little bit of slack so that if we do tumble and we put some extra tension over the top of this, if it were in there, that it wouldn't be pulling on the wire portion or wire side of the UFL connector. Uh, I did mention it previously, but I did crack the battery tray. And this battery tray is very limited to this size of battery. I tried various other batteries. Uh, of course, small batteries you can get to fit, um, but this is very specific. Uh, to the Beta FPV 450. And you can see there where it cracked. Of course, you can repair plastics with Welder or E6000 or as mentioned in the last video, Shugu does work. I am i don't prefer to work with Shugu. I would rather use one of the other alternatives. And I think this is another place that I would like to see improved to make this battery tray more alternate battery friendly. You know, it's very specific to this one. There could be others that uh, fit the battery tray, but it's just not something that I have in my bag and I have a lot of 2S batteries and I had to drop down to like 350 milliamp batteries in order to make those other batteries fit. You wouldn't probably want to do that in this particular case. Uh, the board in here, I don't know if they'll sell it like this, so I don't know if it's worth talking too much about this board. And of course, if you build it, you use your build your uh, board of choice. Um, I think a, a few call outs to make is, you know, in my particular frame, it looks like we have these brass uh, pressure fittings in the whoop protection, but this one over here is either a black <laughs> fitting or it's not brass. I'm not certain about that. I would hope that they would all be the same uh, come production and run times. I did apply the tape, as you see here, to the arms uh, to make sure that the motor wires stayed up there because I felt that there was enough slack down in here that... You know, I I never know how I'm going to fly something. And if you do go tumbling or if these wires come down, I don't want them getting chopped up. So I think that's something that either we need to do or they need to do just to make sure. And it's not ideal because it is so close to the actual motors as the wires come out. But it is a little further out. So it does help to make sure those wires stay up just a touch. Uh, this top cage screws in uh, through these screws that you can see right here. Uh, they are pointed screws. So it, there's no fitting or anything inside the print that they sent uh, so it's it's just a typical screw you're just holding those two things together and that's probably a point that you need to make sure that you don't get it so tight that any vibration dampening that you might get out of the rubber grommets that do go through the frame that you you know end up transferring those vibrations into your video because it's too tight so you just want to get it snug against the grommets but you still want it to be able to possibly bounce around I, now again I say that in speculation because I didn't hunker these down to test to see how much video video vibration I would get if I had the screws too tight. I'm just saying that if you see this later on and you make one of your own, maybe you've got your own ideas, maybe you, you cut your own carbon um, and you decide to go this route, um, that vibration dampening needs to be just, just kind of touching so it can't jiggle freely, but it also want, you need to have that vibration dampening, very likely. 
Of course, this particular board they use does not have a USB port, so you've got to use a connector on it that comes with this little guy here. I did not even look up what this board is because, again, this is not a product review. It's more about, uh, for me, it's more about bringing this to your eyes to see if you have input you'd like to give and feedback that you can provide to Beta FPV as to an interest in this product or product improvements. I I do like the fact that they've kind of taken that HD zero approach of going to the community and saying, Hey, we've got this new product we're going to make and we'd like to get some feedback. It's risky because then some other company could swoop in, make something just like it and beat them to market with a fully fledged product. So there, there's business risk. I, I have to acknowledge that it is a pusher configuration. Uh, some people like, some people don't like. I personally think that the pusher configuration flies slightly different and I don't care for how slightly different it is. But in this particular case, because it is a designed around cruising or getting footage sort, it's not that big a deal. Um, really, it's a non-issue in that particular case. I find in more aggressive flight that I like the motors to be more traditional. Um, inverted motors, props, I don't care for them as much when I'm flying aggressively. So that's really it. You know, no other damage to really report or anything of that nature. I think the DJI 03 air units have proved themselves to be pretty durable. I don't know about that big old eye glass lens camera uh, looking at us there and how durable that is, of course. Uh, I don't want to be the first to test that out, so maybe tell me if you've been flying O3 air units and you've smashed a few up, how it's happened, were they bad crashes, did you kind of expect the camera to get hosed, or were they pretty minor, did you fall over in grass and end up with a scratch or something of that nature, but I think the, the housing of this is pretty well built. I do think there's also the possibility, as we've done in the past, of making these naked. I haven't seen or heard anyone doing it with the O3s, I'm not sure if Dax Neal and his uh, building for uh, quadsensei.com, if he's done one of these naked, I could have swore, but I don't want to testify that he had naked one down and dropped the weight down significantly, but I don't, I can't quote you any numbers on that, and I couldn't find his post on Facebook before I started recording this video. Uh, but if you're interested, he makes small Cinewhoops similar to this uh, and various uh, sort of video formats, uh, quadsensei.com um, might be of interest, something that you can get right now because this is not something you can get unless you design it yourself. Then you can get anything you want. But please, uh, let Beta FPV know. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this particular product. Is there a market for this product? What do you think of their overall design? Uh, what did you think of the footage inside with zero win and what did you think of the outside footage with high winds and how this little guy performed on 2S and the flight time? The flight time, I think, for people that do this sort of flying, that's always uh, an important point. Oftentimes, we get compared to camera drones that are bigger and they have different sort of batteries generally and they fly for a lot longer and they do position hold. It's not really what this one is, but hopefully we can understand that. And uh, if Beta FPV comes along, and hopefully they will be able to come along and take your input and make a product that will fit the market as well as make it better than they've designed right here. And if it does launch or comes around with a bunch of different changes, then we'll take a look at that hopefully as well here on this little channel. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know. The comment section down below, give them some feedback. How interested are you in something like this? I, you know, for me, I want to fly faster, so I need a, a bigger, heavier prop guard. I could give up a few grams, so uh, maybe they can do that as well, but I worry that if you fly faster and you have a bad crash, the way this top piece is secured might not stick together. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.